right, welcome back. This is Birkeland Eyes Part 2. Uh, I just wanted to show you my uh, reactor. It's almost complete. Uh, just a couple more things to change and add. So first of all, I uh, added a control box. Allows me to switch on and off the individual components, such as the pumps, the cooling, the NST, etc. Arc chamber on the left. You know that part already. It's not changed much. Uh, as is the, the regulator and the air pumps, same stuff. Uh, what I didn't have is the, um, is the oxidation chamber on that side. I will show close up. And on the other side, which is not visible right now, is the, uh, is the scrubber absorption column. And on the back side right there are a couple of pumps that rotate the liquid from the bottom of the column to the top. These are the scrubbers. It's transparent PVC uh, for chemical resistance. Um, almost all of the components are either PVC or uh, or PET. The um, the beds uh, float on top of the water and get pushed out, uh, which is what we don't want actually. So um, I'll try to fill the column entirely so it will be forced down. Those are. Uh, Peristaltic pumps, they don't move a lot of liquid, but um, the, they are chemically resistant. The tubing inside is HDPE, so it will uh, be able to resist the nitric acid. And the pump on the left is not yet connected. Um, I had a bit of a problem running it, so it's a work in progress. Bit of a problem on the bottom, as you can see on the, the tarring. I noticed that uh, the copper electrodes, they, um, uh, they tend to oxidize, obviously, and uh, it starts arcing on the bottom, which is not very nice. Um, so it's important to scrape off the, uh, uh, the electrodes once in a while, which can be done uh, without taking it all apart, because I can remove the air inlet and then get a, um, get a screwdriver in there to, to scratch the the inner sides of the electrodes. You might remember the big um, glass cylinder from the, from the last video while I replaced it. All right, so these are the, the oxidizing chambers. So basically that, these are Coke bottles. They've been cut in half and then inverted and uh, glued together. So you get this chamber that's uh, roughly two liters. And then there's a bit of PVC to connect it. As it leaves the oxidation chamber, it um, goes into the first scrubber, which is on the back side. Right there. As it leaves the first scrubber, it goes to the second oxidation chain. Just this one, and as you can see, there is hardly any color, so it's probably not necessary to add another one. And then I made some uh, some pipes for the high voltage wires because um, you know now I uh, already got shocked once and I don't want to do it twice. It's no fun at all. And I had some wheels, because it's, it's a little bit more heavy than I want it to be, but all right. So, uh, a couple of things need to improve. Okay, so the pumps are not that quick, because it was a trade-off, being chemically resistant or being slow, like these. Um, so I want to create a nozzle that will uh, spray the water in. It is, it is working right now, I mean, it, uh, the glass beds are getting uh, wet on top, so it creates a, quite a lot of contact area, but it's still, it's, uh, it could be better. Uh, when the flame collapses under the air pressure, which happens from time to time, I have no way of automatically restarting. Uh, also, I need to add a couple of um, temperature probes, because I don't want a glass to overheat, or when running unattended, I don't want it to, um, to, to shatter or whatnot. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, do some upgrades soon. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. And please, uh, if you have any suggestions, ideas, or uh, if uh, you think that I've been an idiot, then uh, please, please let me know. All right. Bye-bye.